Hello everyone, my name is Victoria Russell and I will be speaking to you today about Cognitive Radio. During this presentation, I will address certain topics. I will start with a little introduction, give you an overview of what a Cognitive Radios are, um, present you with some research and development in the field of Cognitive Radio, uh, propose some challenges and limitations for Cognitive Radio implementation, and also give you some proposed implementation for cognitive radio systems. So currently there are wireless networks everywhere. They're in homes, in schools, businesses, libraries, in open parks. And one thing about wireless networks, a lot of them are capable of supporting some of them hundreds and some of them thousands of users simultaneously. Also, we have within our wireless infrastructure, we have mobile devices and it was estimated in 2014 that we have 7 billion mobile devices worldwide. And between the wireless um, networks and mobile devices, they both use either licensed or unlicensed spectrum. In the licensed spectrum, the user pays for use of that for that spectrum. However, they have private and dedicated use to that spectrum. In the unlicensed spectrum, everyone is able to share it. It is free public spectrum that everyone has access to, and it doesn't cost them anything to set up a network in it. Some of the devices that are on, uh, on licensed spectrum are Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cordless phones, remote controls, devices from the emerging Internet of Things technology, and much more. And with all these devices, you have a lot of traffic that's resulting from not just data, but from VoIP um, traffic, video streaming, and, and audio and much more. So one of the problems that we're faced with now is the overcrowding of our unlicensed spectrum, as well as the f fact that a lot of licensed spectrum is not being used. In some cases, 70% in some places, or 70% at a given time in other places of licensed spectrum that are not being utilized. So the solution to help fix our overcrowded problem on our, on, on our unlicensed spectrum as well as be able, being able to utilize some available spec, um, bands on the licensed spectrum is um, the cognitive radio technology. And what cognitive radio technology does is that it um, tries to help alleviate the problem of overcrowding on the unlicensed spectrum by making use of the licensed spectrum by unlicensed users. So what exactly is cognitive radio? Well, there have been varying definitions throughout the, the time for what it is. And one definition is it is a form of wireless communication in which a transceiver can intelligently detect which communication channels are in use and which are not, and be dynamically configured to move into vacant channels while avoiding occupied ones. And the term cognitive radio was coined by Joseph Matola in 1991, and it is based on software-defined radio technology. So within soft cognitive radio, you have where it's able to sense its environment, be aware of other nodes and, and, and other networks, able to adapt to the environment as it changes, as well as to learn. So there are two types of cognitive radios. There's full cognitive radio, also called the Matola radio, and that radio considers every possible parameter observable when making decisions for dynamic spectrum allocation. And then you have your spectrum sensing cognitive radio, which only considers radio frequency spectrum when making decisions for dynamic spectrum allocation. So cognitive radio 
is consumed with two types of users. There's the primary users who are the licensed users and the secondary users who are the unlicensed users who with the cognitive radio system will be able to access licensed spectrum that's available. And cognitive radio operates within a closed loop cycle where it will have its basic function will be to observe, to decide, to act, and to learn its environment. And it, it operates in a closed loop cycle under two modes, interweave mode and the underlay mode. In the interweave mode, the cognitive radio looks for possible white space in any frequency being sensed. And it will use either wide band, which would um, try to use the entire spectrum or sense the entire spectrum, or will use the narrow band, which will scan specific um, and only uh, parts of the spectrum consecutively. In the underlay mode, only the wide band is used. However, it, it, it utilizes ultra wide band signal with reconfigurable notch frequencies that will allow secondary users to occupy a large part of the spectrum while minimizing interference with active primary users. So there has been a lot of research and development when it comes to cognitive radio. There's the standard that has been developed called IEEE 802.22. And what this is, is it's a working group on wireless regional area networks for developing wide variety standards of standards to enable spectrum sharing. Now the IEEE 802.22 standard is the first cognitive radio based international standard with tangible frequency bands for its operation. And there's a lot of projects that goes on underneath that IEEE 802.22, such as 802.22.1, 802.22.2, as well as 802.22A and B and C. And you can read about that in www.IEEE802.org slash 22. Now here we have a little depiction of the ev evolution of IEEE standardization activities relating to dynamic spectrum access. And it starts from year 1995 all the way to, to now, where you can see where it's evolved with, with the coexistence of standards all the way towards becoming a true cognitive radio technique and standard. So doing research on cognitive radio systems, they've designed what may be what a cognitive radio system will probably look like. And here is the, the physical, the, the graphical depiction showing the different components of what a cognitive radio system might, might, be, might be composed of. For example, there's a policy database component, a learning and reasonable reasoning component, a sensing component, configuration database component, as well as reconfigurable radios. So there's been a lot of research done to design and develop and implement a cognitive re um, radio system within our wireless infrastructure. And one such research comes from Virginia Tech, who has been doing research on cognitive radio since September of 2000. And from their research, one of the things that they were able to design and develop was a cognition cycle, which is um, a pro set of processes within a cognitive engine using multiple objective genetic algorithms. From the cognition cycle, they were able to design and pattern the cognitive radio engine-based genetic algorithms in a network in 2007. And from since then, they continued research where they designed and developed even more cognitive radio um, systems. One such 
system is the cognitive radio architecture prototype, the cognitive engine architecture prototype, as well as a prototype multiband radio using the Motorola RFIC. And here we have um, a picture of what the prototype multiband radio looks like. Here is a graphical depiction of Virginia's Tech cognitive engine architecture as well as their cognitive radio architecture. Other research done on cognitive radio can be seen from Salim and his team of researchers who want to address the problem of dynamic channel assignment for cognitive radio users in multi-radio, multi-channel cognitive radio networks. And in order to address that problem, they propose a distributed spectrum aware dynamic channel assignment scheme. And what this does is it utilizes available channels by assigning them to multiple radio interfaces of cognitive nodes based on primary radio on occupancy, minimum interference to primary nodes, as well as maximum connectivity and minimum interference between cognitive radio nodes. Another research was presented by Saltini and his research team who designed developed and demonstrated the cognitive radio capabilities with their cognitive radio system called CreateNest. And CreateNest is a combination of Create, which is a distributed and scalable network architecture, as well as Nest, which is a plug and play implementation of a cognitive radio network that utilizes software defined radio technology and this with this um, test bed createness test bed they were able to demonstrate the abilities of a cognitive radio system showing that a cognitive radio system can discover local neighborhood neighbors be able to sense spectrum estimate channels, dynamically select channels, dynamically access spectrum, all the while avoiding other um, wireless nodes and other radio frequency interferences. So as with any technology, they have um, challenges and limitations. And some of the challenges and limitations to designing, developing, and implementing a cognitive radio is the fact that there are different and incompatible wireless technologies that makes implementing cognitive radio technology uh, difficult and challenging. Also, there's a need for advanced hardware components that can support a cognitive radio implementation. For example, there needs high-end radio frequency selectors, high-speed processors, advanced signal processing modules, dedicated sensing unit in secondary hardware, as well as multi-in, multi-out antenna units. Another challenge to implementing cognitive radio is the fact that there is a need for an effective sensing algorithm that is capable of detecting sped spectrum signals. So there have been multiple um, proposed implementation for cognitive radio technology. One such proposal comes from uh, Trigu and his team of researchers who propose the mobile scheme for cognitive radio networks. And with this proposal, they propose that you use a cognitive radio system in order to allow mobile users to seamlessly switch to the best available spectrum band while roaming from one network to another. Another proposed implementation was offered by Wang and his team of researchers who proposed the Autonomic Cognitive Radio Nodes Architecture, called ACRA. With this proposed implementation, they want to use the cognitive radio system in, um, in, in a way to build it autonomic, autonomically from the 
from the ground up in order that when it is implemented within a cognitive radio network, it will be self-managed. So we have seen um, what cognitive radio does, how it can help alleviate some of the issues of overcrowding in unlicensed spectrum. And so there continues to be advancement towards the design, development, and implementation of cognitive radios within the wireless network infrastructure. And this, but there still needs to be more research that's to be done, especially when it comes to designing and developing um, hardware and software that can support a cognitive radio system, as well as um, the development of an overall cognitive radio architecture that can efficiently and effectively incorporate cognitive radio technology within our current wireless network infrastructure. And this is all necessary in order to alleviate the problems of overcrowding on the public spectrum, especially as um, technology continues to advance. So a well, couple of recommendations that is put forward for cognitive radio research and implement, design and implementation is that ensure that the cognitive radio implementation is able to work and coexist with current wireless technology as well as to ensure that the current um, current cognitive radio implementation not only be autonomic but also be wireless technology agnostic as seeing that there's so many different wireless technology that is existing and continues to emerge. Thank you.